What's up ladies and gentlemen, it's Scott here and welcome back to Fudge Muppet. Today we are coming at you with our latest all new, all fresh build and this one is for Fallout 4. This is the Outlaw, our brute revolver build. The Outlaw has been to hell and back more times than he can count and in the post-war wastes where everything is trying to kill everything, he rises to the top. The Outlaw is looking out only for himself, protecting his own livelihood after failing to protect those closest to him. He is the quickest on the trigger in all of Boston and the more focused who try to test that at once, the better. With insane speed and catastrophic criticals, the Outlaw annihilates one target after another, increasing his damage with every shot fired. Thanks to his unique revolver, as well as his agility and luck perks, the Outlaw has an essentially infinite supply of action points and critical hits, making for some badass cinematic scenes. He can enter vats and clear an entire room without moving one footstep in any direction. The only thing left is a stack of corpses and a smoking gun. Before we get started, don't forget the timestamps to each section of the video can be found just below in the description. But with that said, let's kick things off with the Outlaw's backstory and basic values. The Outlaw was born and raised in Boston and had quite a simple childhood. Like most boys his age, he enjoyed physical activity, electing to participate in every sport his school offered. He wasn't a prodigious athlete by any means, but he was competent and consistently picked for the various teams. While he loved the competition and the sense of purpose the sport gave him, he also really enjoyed the camaraderie that went along with it. The sense of brotherhood where teamwork and loyalty were encouraged resonated with the outlaw. He made his way through school accruing passable grades and before he knew it he was out in the world trying to make a living. He didn't proceed into university as he was far better off as a handyman than a man of the arts or higher education. The most noteworthy thing the outlaw got from his time in the education system was his high school sweetheart, a light haired beauty named Mary. He spent the following years under the guiding hand of a local mechanic and he made an honest living as a mechanic's apprentice. The outlaw's life became infinitely more meaningful the Day his wife gave birth to his lovely daughter, Anna. The day he laid eyes on her and she opened her eyes for the first time, the outlaw fell in love all over again, and he vowed to work harder than anyone had ever worked before, paving his daughter's way through school and college. He would do anything for her, and so he did. He worked 50 hour weeks for many years, and their family were finally looking at buying a home of their own, until what began as a typical Monday morning turned into the worst day of his life. He had started started work at 6am, his hands were dirty and he was already worn out by 9 when Mary was driving Anna to school. At 9.30am the phone rang and the outlaw answered. An apologetic paramedic told him what had happened. As he listened to the woman's voice tell him about the fatal car crash, the outlaw's hands began to shake and the world around him shook uncontrollably. Moments later the ground rushed up to meet him. The day of the funeral was bright and sunny, dressed in black and sweating, the outlaw silently cursed the sky. He cried until he was dehydrated, his eyes swollen and veined with red. The caskets were lowered into the graves, one seven foot long, the other only five, a coffin for a child. The outlaw coped the only way he could. The garage was too quiet and the silence terrified him, so he quit his job and joined the US Army. He needed a distraction and maybe fighting for something worthwhile would restore a sense of purpose to his life. And in many ways, it did. He fought valiantly and unlike his brother in arms, he relished the opportunities he was given to fight on the front lines. When his life was in mortal danger, he could only think in the now. His mind was so preoccupied with keeping himself alive that his wife and daughter barely crossed his mind. It was the sweetest feeling in the world and it was a million times better than it was back at camp and his thoughts were artillery strikes bombarding his sanity. The outlaw completed his service with a medal of honor and many new friends. Time and circumstance had allowed his emotional wounds to heal and he was almost ready to get on with his life once again. On his first day back in Boston, he made his way to the cemetery with two bouquets of flowers, yellow tulips as bright as her hair for Mary and daisies for Anna. On his way back to the cemetery entrance, he passed a dark haired woman knelt at a gravestone. He offered her a sincere smile and his condolences. She had lost her father in the war. A few months later, there was a veterans hall meeting for men in the Outlaws Regiment, and among the familiar faces, he saw the same dark-haired woman. Her father had been in his battalion, and she was attending on his behalf. They got to talking and hit it off. Eventually, after much time, the Outlaw was ready to try to move on, and he asked the dark-haired woman to dinner. 
Her name was Nora, and she brought some light back into his personal life. They fell in love and settled in Sanctuary Hills to raise a family. The day that Sean was born was bittersweet for the outlaw. Watching his son's eyes open, they were the exact same shade of deep brown that Anna's had been, and he wept. It was an uncanny mixture of joy and sadness, but the two emotions combined to create a sense of hope deep in the outlaw's bones. But just when the outlaw was certain he had made it through the darkest chapter of his life, the war with the Chinese came to its inevitable conclusion, and the bombs fell on Boston. Upon waking up in Vault 111, the outlaw is a broken man. After finally learning to fall in love again and allowing himself to be vulnerable, he was cruelly punished. He had failed to protect those closest to him and his grief is overwhelming. As he makes his way into the post-war wastelands, the only thing keeping him sane is the potential of finding his son alive. But he will cope with his turmoil the same way he had before, by finding something to fight for. And this time, it's for his survival. The new state of the Commonwealth is almost confronting to the outlaw. The first time he experienced loss, the world continued on as normal and it angered him. Now, the world was in a defeated, chaos-riddled state, just like him. And the outlaw knows better than anyone how to deal with a world gone to ruin, as he's been there once and survived to tell the tale, stronger than he had been before. Evidently, the outlaw will have a hard time relating to anyone else in the wasteland. He is only really interested in number one now, especially when, spoiler alert, he reaches the end of the main story and Sean dies. When that happens, he will have no selfless purposes left and will be far more hedonistic and selfish. For that reason, he won't be committing seriously to any of the factions, instead deciding to ride along with each of them to get what he needs and nothing more. He will align with the railroad early on to gain access to their ballistic weave technology and whether he stays with them or joins up with the Institute is up to you. Either way, the motivations of the factions don't appeal to him. Siding with the railroad will allow him to remove both of the powerful forces from Boston whereas siding with the Institute will leave a powerful faction alive, but will free up the surface for him to take control over. Either way, these faction choices are not the main focus for the outlaw. As the name suggests, he will do what it takes to protect himself, and that means raiding settlements and not playing very nice. Eventually, he will side with the Raiders of Nuka-World, going with the Operators for the money and the pack due to the fact they are far easier to manipulate in comparison to the Bloodthirsty Disciples. With the Raiders, he will take over over and raid all of the Commonwealth settlements. At the start of the game, the Outlaw's special stats will be 2 Strength, 1 Perception, 2 Endurance, 3 Charisma, 1 Intelligence, 10 Agility, and 9 Luck. The special book in Sean's bedroom will go into Endurance to make you a bit tougher during the early game stage. As you can see, a lot of the usual high stats have been left aside here. We won't be battering through enemies with Strength and Long Range Accuracy, and Awareness isn't our forte with Perception. This build will have a high focus on Action Points and Devastating criticals, and these can be achieved with a combination of agility and luck. Endurance starts off pretty low, but by the end of the game, with the special book, the bobblehead, and the perk point investments, this will scale up to prepare you for almost anything you encounter in the wasteland, especially considering your up close and personal, thick of the action playstyle. But with the backstory roleplaying factions and stat point allocation sorted out, let's take a look at the specific ways they will affect your perk choices. The Outlaw will have a pretty strong focus on a couple of stat lines, so rather than sticking to the priority perks, we're going to give you a rundown of all of them and why they're important. First off, we have the Strength stat line. As I mentioned a few moments ago, Strength is not the Outlaw's go-to stat, but we will want to take all ranks of the Armourer perk. As a former mechanic, the Outlaw is no stranger to tinkering with leather and metal, and with this perk, you'll be able to access all ranks of armour modifications. We won't be taking any specific perks from Endurance, but the base stat does have some practical uses, as I said just before. Putting three perk points into the base stat will make the world of difference when taking lots of incoming damage. We can't rely on Sneak to clear a location without drawing the attention of enemies, so be prepared to take a hit or two. The last of our perk investments outside of the Agility and Luck stat lines goes into Charisma. Don't worry about the low stat itself, but the Lone Wanderer perk is a great addition to the build. There is a heavy emphasis on the role-playing and backstory of the Outlaw being focused on number one and pretty much nothing else. Having a companion will just slow the Outlaw down and he's not keen on protecting them Damage. when they become a liability. Scrolls. No, the Outlaw works alone and that's how he likes it, so be sure to take all ranks of Lone Wanderer. With this perk maxed out, you'll take 30% less damage and deal 25% more damage across the board. You'll also gain 100 extra carry weight and 25 extra action points, as long as you're traveling without a companion. This is where things get 
bit interesting though. Next up we have the agility stat line. First, take all ranks of Gunslinger. This will double your damage with non-automatic pistols and will give you a chance to disarm or even cripple your opponent. It also increases pistol range significantly. Then take Action Boy. This will increase your AP regeneration speed by 75%. Then take all ranks of Quick Hands. With this, you'll be the first on the draw, reloading faster and using no action points when reloading in VAT. And if you didn't have enough action points already, the third rank will give you 10 more to use. Finally, we have Gun Fu. With this, your shots in VATs will increase in damage when you chain several enemies in a row. You will do 25% extra damage to your second target, 50% to your third, and a guaranteed critical to your fourth and beyond. This makes for some seriously satisfying cinematic kills in VATs. Combine this with your luck stat and dig god do you have a damage output that will be insane. Speaking of luck, there are a bunch of perks to take from this stat line, starting off with Scrounger. Take all ranks of this to increase your chances of finding ammo in containers. Also, the final rank will give you the chance to refill your magazine when firing your last round. Then take three ranks of Bloody Mess. Your already awesome kill streaks will be even more satisfying now as all of your kills will end up in an explosion of viscera. It also gives you a nifty 15% to your overall damage output. Next up, we have Idiot at Savant and this will hugely benefit your leveling ability to compensate for low intelligence. With this perk, you'll randomly get 5 times XP for any event that results in XP gain. Also, when this happens, there's a chance that you'll get 3 times bonus XP for every kill for a short period of time. After that, we have better criticals. This will drastically increase your crit damage, making each crit do 250% more damage. With Gunfu's guaranteed crits, just think of the possibilities. Then comes Critical Banker. With this, you can store up to 4 criticals for later use and with all ranks of Four Leaf Clover, every hit you land in VATS has an excellent chance of filling your critical meter. So not only will criticals be ridiculously powerful, they'll also be very common and you can store them as you see fit. Lastly, we have Grim Reaper's Sprint and this is for your VATS effectiveness. Any kill in VATS has a 35% chance of refilling your AP when all ranks are taken and that 35% chance also applies to refilling your critical meter. You're basically a critical factory at this point. There isn't a whole lot to say about the playstyle that we haven't set in the perks. You will be regenerating action points and refilling your critical meter constantly, so use VATS pretty much 100% of the time, and you can try and chain as many enemies in a row without exiting VATS mode. Then you can let fly with crit after crit after crit, all of which deal insane damage. At the end of the game, not including gear, but including all perk investments, bobbleheads, and the special book, the Outlaws end game special stats will be 3 Strength, 2 Perception, 7 Endurance, 4 Charisma, 1 Intelligence, 11 Agility, and 10 Luck. Note that despite the bobbleheads, we still have Intelligence at 1. That's because we will not be getting that bobblehead. The lower your Intelligence, the more effective the Idiot Savant perk will be. As for gear, the Outlaw will wear the Dirty Army Fatigues, beefed up with the Ballistic Weave. This outfit will give you plus 1 Strength and plus 1 Agility. Top that off with a grey knit cap for a bonus point to luck and a gunner's camo bandana for the aesthetic. Over your fatigues, you'll want to wear heavy metal armor on each leg with the ultra light mod, the operator's belt and chest piece with the deep pocketed mod, and sturdy metal armor on each arm also with the ultra light mod. We keep the metal standard for the appearance and we're already super powerful from Lone Wanderer and Ballistic Weave, so it won't be detrimental. But if you want to upgrade the armor pieces to something like alloyed, feel free. As for weapons, this is pretty simple. The Outlaw will sport Kellogg's Pistol. This unique revolver has an ability that is absolutely perfect for the Outlaw's playstyle as it refills your action points any time you land a critical hit. We touched on companions earlier, but to clarify, the Outlaw will not be traveling with companions. You can use Gage temporarily if you want to get his perk, but ultimately you want to travel solo, utilizing the benefits of the Lone Wanderer perk. The Outlaw will not be building settlements, but he will certainly be raiding them with his band of raiders. And there you have it, guys. Subscribe to Fudge from up it and give the video a like if you enjoyed it. This has been the Outlaw. Don't forget timestamps as well as links to all our social media accounts can be just found below in the description. But with that said, thank you so much for watching, guys. My name's Scott, and I will catch you next time.